hello everyone. Welcome to the special edition of Meet New Fleets powered by Booking Manager. Um, today we will meet some uh, fleets uh, from US, Caribbean. We have some exotic destinations uh, to present and some great people to meet. And hopefully they will all um, have some short intro about who they are, what they do, what their fleet is special about, and of course their selling destination. My name is Martina. For those who don't know me, I work in MMK for past uh, more than a decade, and I will be your host today. You can stop me whenever you want, and you can uh, ask questions or give some feedback, information, whatever needed. Um, today in Booking Manager, we have almost 10,000 yachts from 900 fleets worldwide. It's almost uh, 500 destinations that we cover. Uh, and some of those destinations and some of those fleets we will meet today. Uh, first with us is uh, Philippe from Barefoot Yacht Charters. Hi, are you with us? Hi, good morning. Good morning, oh, good how are you? I'm good, thank <laughs> yes. you. <laughs> yeah, majority of um, of our brokers and the charter agencies are here with us from Europe. So for them, it's a good afternoon, but of course, uh, good morning to you. Welcome and tell us something about your fleet. So we're located in the Grenadines, which is in the Southern Caribbean. Um, we operate a fleet of 14 boats. Uh, which is split into two categories. We have performance yachts and then um, uh, comfort yachts. Um, from performance yachts, we're operating sea winds and O yachts. And then from the comfort versions, we're operating lagoons and uh, Bali's and stuff like that. Uh, we have both monohulls and catamarans available. We're planning to aggressively expand the fleet over the next couple of years. Um, sort of COVID slowed things down for us in the mm. Caribbean quite a bit, but um, we're happy to say we've been up and operational for a year now and have seen sort of some, you know, really positive um, numbers. So it yeah. seems that chartering is back in the Caribbean with the bank. Um, the Grenadines in the Southern Caribbean is a, a sailor's destination. So in islands. And also the islands are laid out in a north-south line. So they're not sort of surrounding a central island and in, in sort of creating kind of a swimming pool effect the way that the virgins are. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a bit more um, open ocean sailing. Um, average wind speeds here around 20 knots. Average waves are around two to three meters, uh, but with an eight to 10 second interval. So it's kind of a nice open ground swell such, uh, setup. Um, the islands are anywhere from two to four hours sailing time apart from each other. And most of the anchorages are, I guess, what people would call underdeveloped and that they're pristine bays and stuff like that. There are very few towns like you see on the bottom left hand side. That's actually a picture of Kingstown, the capital of the big yeah. island. Vincent. Yeah. But as you move down the Grenadines, it gets to be a bit more like the bottom right-hand side, which mm -hmm. is just um, empty bays with little little villages of two to three hundred people. Um, Ideally, to enjoy the freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very nice. Yeah, really nice sailing area. Good. Um, I prepared here a few questions for you. If you would like to um, answer, you, you answered on uh, most of them. But if you want to add something for the agencies watching us, feel free. All right. Um, so getting to our destination, we just recently uh, built an international airport, which is new to the Grenadines. Mm -hmm. So you know, people who may be familiar with the Grenadines of 10 years ago would be familiar with getting here via some other island, uh, usually Barbados or St. Lucia. Uh, mm -hmm. So those days are done. They now have direct virgin flights twice a week straight from London to St. Vincent. Um, and then also from the North American markets, which is most of your agency European, but we also yep. have Air Canada and American Airlines flights from the North American market. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, the area is now a lot more accessible than it's ever been before, 
but nobody really knows that. So it's not crowded. Like you can arrive to an anchorage at any time of the day and you're going to find a mooring, you're going to find space to anchor. Um, okay. So, you know, it's sort of, this is the ideal time. You can get here easily, but the crowds haven't arrived yet. This is a unique time in history, if you will. And in another okay. four to five years, we'll probably look back at this time and be talking about it as kind of the, wow, do you remember when? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, the best time to go sailing? Uh, there is really no best time. We're south of the hurricane, uh, the, the normal hurricane belt. So you're, the odds of having your week vacation interrupted by a tropical entity are one in 50. So oh, okay. it, you know, reasonable odds where when you go north into the Virgin Islands, that changes to like one in 10. Mm -hmm. um, and then moving a little further north goes to like one in four and one in five as you approach the Bahamas and places like that. So yeah. there's a significantly lower risk in the summertime. So prices are a lot lower. Um, mm -hmm. place, the islands are a lot less, uh, there's a lot less people here. So the summertime has its appeal and it's, it's you know, ideal thing. Temperatures are very, they're the same all year. It's 30 degrees, it never changes. The water temperature is nice. 30 degrees, it never changes. Um, nice. So I guess the big change is the wind speeds probably decrease to like 15 knots on average from the sort of 20 knots on average we get in the winter time. Uh -huh. um, and then winter time, obviously, you know, it's the appeal of getting away from winter. So this is the you know, high season in the Caribbean. Um, it's a little bit windier. Uh, so, um, you know, sailors that are coming down and looking for an exhilarating experience would probably enjoy more sailing in January, February, March. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Sailors that are looking for a bit, maybe a little bit of a quieter experience might enjoy sailing in, in June, July, August or uh -huh. something. Good. Thank you very much, Philip. It was great. Um, I think we all learned something new and it's a great destination and great fleet to, to, to enjoy. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. We have another uh, great fleet, which is also a golden partner of MMK, Chesapeake Bay Yacht Charter. Sean, are you there? Yeah, right here. Thank you. Hi. Hey. Welcome. <laughs> Good morning. I also have uh, Brendan here, who is uh, afternoon for everyone. Yeah, so uh, myself, I'm the operations <laughs> manager, and Brendan is our base manager here. Hi, Brendan. Hi, Sean. Hi, Sean. Welcome. Tell us something about your fleet. You are new in MMK, fresh. Absolutely. Golden, yeah. Exclusive. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We uh, so we have uh, mostly monohulls on our fleet up here in the Chesapeake Bay, and I'm going to let uh, Brendan talk a little bit about the bay and its its sailing qualities. But mm -hmm. uh, we have a couple of uh, catamarans that we're working with. Of course, catamarans up here are very different uh, the way that they get used than in, I think, most of the, you know, down in the islands or uh, even in, um, in the med. Uh, but um, a lot of times here in the bay, you have, you know, almost 11,000 miles worth of coastline to explore. Um, anywhere from nice urban areas. Uh, we have concierge level services that allow people to get all of their nice restaurant bookings and other mm -hmm. other stuff for guests and meet up with guests but we also have lots of shoreline that is just um open and natural and kind of uh easy to look at mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. um it's uh it's common knowledge to, to the local uh people that time and time again they come back and they experience something new on the bay because there's just so much coastline to to explore but also the abundance of uh the townships the heritage and just maritime history that's on the bay it's uh it's all encompassing with the cuisine that's available mm -hmm. um there are wineries distilleries breweries all sorts of things for the for the sailor sailor and uh we do um have for the most part a pretty temperate uh weather climate we do have a, a very short winter but mm -hmm. uh but in spring summer and fall you have uh adequate winds for for sailing um and uh definitely in the fall time it gets very picturesque uh there like sean said again there there is uh, the best of both worlds to be had it's to you know whoever is looking for that exciting nightlife or if they want 
serenity and total quietness and just to be surrounded by wildlife that's that's available um right. uh, we do have our, our model holes and our cat holes and we are looking to uh grow this into a fleet of about 20 to 25 somewhere in that, in that that spot <clears throat> and uh ideally get get um week weekly bookings because there is so much to be uh explored and, and experience or, i mean people would be shortchanging themselves if they were to try to come in for i mean a long weekend is fine yeah and we're putting together itineraries that that would accommodate for that as well so mm -hmm. um and that's something else that we i i really want to provide to the fleet is that local knowledge of knowing like okay this is a hundred percent guarantee of absolutely experiencing the best of the bay and uh um yeah I, ideally a week charter would be great and and because there is so much even after week charters they would be like wow we didn't really we didn't get to go there and we heard from from locals that that's an an, an exceptional spot and uh, there would definitely be a, a a return client just because of the abundance of what we we have here in the bay. Um, I was going to say also the the one nice thing about the Chesapeake Bay area, um, and you do have access. A lot of folks doing a seven day or longer, uh, we'll do a whole loop where they go through the bay and then be able to hit the ocean side as well. Mm -hmm. So you kind of loop around and get a good variety of sailing. And then on the yeah. bay itself, it's rather forgiving. We're completely all sand bottom. There's probably only five points of, uh, of rocks anywhere uh, that are of, of any concern. So for a lot of folks finding good gunk holding spots, uh, spot, spots to just kind of just anchor out, um, lots uh -huh. of areas for anchoring and mooring uh, that are just uh -huh. scattered around. So whether, like with, you said, with good holding, with good, you have lots of good holding on it. So. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. I love the Chesapeake area. We, we go there every year in Annapolis and uh, visit the Bocho exhibit there. And we are always like surprised how nice and calm it is, how people are so friendly and everything is so um, like, like it's everything is in details. Perfect. Uh, how do we get? Okay, I know how to get there, but uh, yeah. what do you recommend? Flying to Washington D.C., uh, taking a rentals, or what do you what do you so recommend? You could, you could easily fly to BWI, which yeah. is the Baltimore Washington. Airport, yeah, Baltimore Washington Airport. Yeah, and it's only thirty minutes from our base location in Annapolis. Yep, and um, uh, best times to sail is basically spring, summer, fall. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, so now. So yeah, now, yeah, yeah, I would say, now, yeah. yeah, I would say if you're looking for like a little more spirited with the stronger winds, obviously our, our like April, May time frame, we get a lot of bad, yeah. um, you know, in the fall, you get that those winds pop up again. Um, the winds, I mean, the, the waves and winds are pretty calm um, uh, during the summer period of it. So we get that nice hot weather. It is humid here for people that are kind of just, you know, looking at it uh, with the, the size of the bay and everything. But uh, yeah. there's just, yeah, there's it's good time to sail is any time through that period, uh, whether mm -hmm. you want that little bit, it's not ever going to be really like um, frostbite sailing or anything, but you definitely can get some of the cooler sailing if you're looking for that as well as instead of just the, the uh, bathing suit sails. So there's a bunch of different yeah. ways to do it here. Perfect. And then spots, yeah, best mooring spots. Um, Definitely uh, the one of the most popular destinations is St. Michael's, which is on the eastern shore of the Chesapeake Bay. Um, it has the just the um, the wining and dining experience, museums, heritage, uh, just restaurants, uh, tons of docking, but also mooring around outside in the in the, in the main uh, mm -hmm. main harbor out front. Um, Tons of stuff to do on land, and um, and then you're kind of get that sweet spot between not having you got some some action going on, but it's not the uh, urban sprawl that you mm -hmm, might get in mm -hmm. Baltimore, uh, which yeah. which leads to you know 
probably the better question is what can I not do when I'm not sick? <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> everything. <laughs> there is absolutely everything to do. There's um yeah. near near Annapolis and the Bay Bridge, there's an, an accessible uh, bike path that goes through a, a national kind of wildlife refuge that's um, very accessible from marinas if you want to, or if you want to simply anchor off, you can easily, um, you know, thingy in, you can get, get yeah. on your tender, come on in, and uh, which, which that, that, that's also, I mean, you can with confidence anchor your boat off. You don't have to be on a mooring ball. You can say, okay, hey, I want to go yeah. to support this spot, anchor off, and 90% of the spots are um, good holding. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. top recommendation as a local. Um, I, honestly, Annapolis bases you somewhere where you're very close to everything. You are close to Baltimore. Yeah. You are close to St. Michael's. Um, definitely the southern uh, region of the Bay is a lot less developed. Um, but within cruising distance and, and, you know, a half day, day, you can get to those spots too um, from Annapolis. And you definitely get to immerse yourself in the local culture and you know, just like the friendliness and 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 get to get a sense of the people and yeah everything everything that Maryland has to offer you can get a taste of it all in in Annapolis yeah and I just want to add I know that everybody says that you know everybody claims they have good seafood but if you haven't tried Maryland <laughs> crab cakes which I agree crab are, soup crab. and crab cakes are the best yeah <laughs> they're true crab cakes I couldn't agree crabs. more <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, uh, I'm no looking in filling. yeah <laughs> I'm looking forward coming to Annapolis in October just for crab soup and, of course, um, some business and shopping and everything. <laughs> oh, thank you, guys. Everything. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, really. Thank you. It was great. Um, another company uh, that will be presenting uh, their fleet is from Cuba, uh, Plat and Sailing. Ulrich, are you there? But I'm in yeah. Germany. I'm fine, but I'm in Germany now. You're in Germany. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but okay, but your your boats are pretty warm here. <laughs> your boats are not with you, so <laughs> no, your boats are over there waiting yeah, for yeah. me. Good. How are you? Tell us something about your fleet. Uh, oh. What what are you so special about? Destination, etc. Okay. Yeah, uh, Cuba is a very special destination because there are not that many uh, uh, charter companies. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, the country, uh, like you know, is very special because they still have this kind of socialism, socialism, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. uh, makes some, uh, some people don't uh, want to go to Cuba that far and some are not allowed, like uh, some people from the States, but now they, uh, I think Biden opened the country, uh, the, the possibilities to uh, visit Cuba for the US people as well. So um, we are in the south of Cuba, like in the middle of the, the country, but in the south coast in the, the Bay of San Fuegos, which is a real big bay. And uh, there we have uh, our eight catamarans. <clears throat> and uh, from there, most, <clears throat> most of our clients, they sail from there to the west, like to uh, Cayo Lago and all these islands around there. Mm -hmm. And the other uh, other destination is to the east, where is mm -hmm. Trinidad, and there are also beautiful islands around this uh, city of Trinidad or further in the east, mm -hmm. like uh, mm -hmm. Jardines, the the gardens of uh, the uh, the Queen, Car gardens of the Queen in English. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All these cats are bareboat or crude or both. Uh, you can get them all barefoot and all crude. Uh, the only which we uh, right now only charter uh, as crude is the Lagoon 46. Mm -hmm. um, we prefer the uh, a crew on it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, do you have any recommendations like uh, best sailing areas, best uh, places to visit, what to do uh, if you are not on boat sailing? Uh, 
some other okay. recommendations? Uh, the, the main reason uh, the charter boat in, in, in Cuba is uh, the beautiful nature we have because the most of the islands outside uh, from the mainland, they are uh, like untouched because uh, mm -hmm. the Cubans, the Cubans, uh, the uh, Cubans do not have a lot of private boats or like no private boats. So when you are mm -hmm. out there on the islands, you are like uh, on your own. Maybe there are some uh, people uh, there uh, um, who are looking for these islands. Uh, mm -hmm. Some maybe some how they called uh, like bark ranges. There are maybe uh -huh. three or four like bark ranges on these islands. But uh, there's nothing, uh, nothing more. So you, uh, there are no tourists, no other boats. You just find the beach. You all have, you have all these beaches for you, and especially all the reefs for snorkeling and uh, um, a lot of fishes also for fishing. And uh, yeah, that's. Do you the, offer the, the this? Thing is nature. Uh... The, the, the thing is, uh, the the beautiful thing in Cuba is yeah. the the un, uh, untouched nature we have over there. Mm, yeah, I agree. Do you offer this snorkeling equipment, fishing equipment as um, as an extra service? Okay, the snorkeling equipment uh, you can get at our base. You do not mm -hmm. have to pay for that. For that, we we offer it to everyone, and okay. you bring it back when you bring the back back the boat. All mm -hmm. our boats have a fishing license, but okay. we do not uh, do not run fishing. Uh, Okay. Uh, fishing equipment, but mm -hmm. if you bring but if we bring our own, high, yeah, but you don't need much. There are so many fish; they are happy if they find <laughs> you. Okay, and where, uh, how far are you from the um, airport? Um, from airport, uh, the, the main airports right now are uh, um, Havana and Varadero, mm -hmm. which is about two hundred thirty kilometers away. Okay. There is uh, another airport in uh, Santa Clara, which is only 60, and there's only also one in Cienfuegos. Cienfuegos, okay. maybe next year you can uh, uh, arrive from the States uh, mm -hmm. again. And uh, the main airports are Havana and Varadero. But we, we organize transfers from there oh, uh, our, and also back. Because there are a lot of people, they also, when they come to Cuba, they also want to see Havana. And yeah. most of our clients, they stay two or three days in Havana, then they come to the base and to the charter or after the charter, they go back to Havana. We, we to Havana. organize something for them as well because we have, we have very good, uh, we have a lot of contacts in Havana for mm -hmm. organized hotels and some trips and everything. Oh, nice. Thank you very much. It was great presentation. And I think we all learned something new about Cuba and of course your, your fleet. Thank you. It, it was, uh, it was really great. Yeah. Maybe we can, uh, because Cuba is a little bit, yeah, different to, uh, other countries. Yeah. Um, I think you should, you should send all to the, to all the agencies, our agency handbook, yes. where yes. there are all special things in Cuba, like buying food, like getting into the country, visa, um, yeah. problems, no problems, where you can read telecommunication, everything, which is a little bit different to the other Western countries. Yes, I've read it. You've sent it to me on email. Uh, yeah. After the webinar, we will send to all the attendees uh, this handbook in PDF, so everyone can uh, definitely read it and have some more information. It is great. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a question for you. Uh, it's from Laura. Do you have to be an experienced sailor for Cuba? Um, yeah, you should. Uh, you should have some experience as uh, for sure. And uh -huh. uh, and um, I, I tell all people who do not have a lot of experience. Maybe the first time you take a an, uh, a skipper with you. Or, mm -hmm. or for minimum uh, a cook because the cooks they are also very good skippers so uh, it's less it costs uh -huh. less and uh, but they know all the good places because uh, there are a lot of uh, really really uh, beautiful anchor places but you if you don't know the area very good you will yep. not find them also like the reefs our base manager shows everything to all clients if they want before they do their charter he, he because he knows every place 
and every reef and every mm -hmm. anchoring and every very beautiful uh, beach. He knows all these places and how you can pass the reefs and uh, with the boat as well, because we have this uh, um, uneven, uh, these areas where the water is not deep enough. How do, uh -huh. I don't know how uh -huh. to tell it. And so it's, it's uh, quite important to get an, uh, uh, yeah. all these informations or you the best is first time take a skipper yeah or a cook which is cheaper and he or cooks cook. yes yeah. <laughs> they are cubans okay. they are cubans and they uh they work very good and uh yeah. yeah and they they will organize you a lot of fish as well because they know ah. where you get the barracudas the lobsters and everything ah so you don't need the fishing equipment with them you don't need they are... you, you don't <laughs> need to buy that many things because the fish is nice. in the water perfect Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Let's go to another fleet. Uh, Star Voyage, Thibaut, hi. Thibaut, we cannot hear you. Uh, Hello, we hear you now. No, we don't hear you. Uh, uh, you hear me? Yes, you hear me no, now? we can hear you. Yes, yes welcome. Hello. Well, thank you. So, Star Voyage, we are a charter company um, in Martinique, in the Caribbean island. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a fleet of uh, 25 boats, most of catamarans. We've got uh, the biggest boat, the Lagoon 52, the Lagoon 50, until uh, the Lagoon 380. Most of our boats is from Lagoon. We've got some Fontaine Pajot and always uh, two monohulls. So now you say 440, uh, 440, 40, brand new, and uh, so you say 400. And uh, what else? Uh, we are all charter company from uh, from there. And we do, uh, most of our clients are coming from Europe. We don't have clients coming from um, from USA, uh, not a lot. Some of uh, Canada, but not a lot also. And uh, most of our clients are doing the, the Grenadine Island. Mm -hmm. uh, what can I say? Uh, what do you recommend? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, do I recommend? Uh, for my clients, I recommend to go to the Grenadine Island and to mm -hmm. sell at least 10 days. After mm -hmm. seven days, we can manage to do it. Better with crew in this case, because seven days is uh, quite short. To, uh, to explore everything. And uh, how far is your base from the airport? We cannot hear you. Can you please repeat how far is the, how far is, how many? We are far, like 45 minutes, 45 minutes from the airport. Uh -huh, and, 45 uh, and uh, you, we organize the taxi, uh, taxi transfer. Mm -hmm. Very easy okay. to organize. Mm -hmm. And um, what is nice is like uh, the best, like when you arrive from the airport, in 45 minutes you are in the, in the base, and then your skipper will welcome you if you go to charter with crew. If you go to charter with crew, the check-in will be done on the next day. But very important uh -huh. to know because most of the clients who come with boat uh, for the, the charter boat expect uh, to have a check-in, uh, the technical check-in, I mean, because you can sleep on board, but mm -hmm. the technical check-in will be done next day. But it's very mm -hmm. important to know, because if they don't know it, the, the, the client thinks that they will lose one day. But uh, okay. as in, uh, in Caribbean, the night is coming quite short. At 6, uh, at 6 p.m. is night almost. So okay. it's very difficult to do the check-in during the night, especially with clients who just come from Europe, who are very tired. Mm -hmm. so, so the best is to do the check-in next day. Do you need to be an experienced sailor to explore uh, Martinique and the area? Honestly, like most of the, if I'll be honest, most of the clients now, they don't have much experience. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's better to have experience anyway. Yeah, but it's always better. Person, and in the first time, it's always better. If you don't have that much experience, get a skipper the first time, and second time, do it without skipper. Because yeah. the skipper mm -hmm. is, is 
not just someone who, who like uh, have a responsibility of the boat. He's always like a guide to show you the best yeah. place to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you all agree on it. Uh, for the first time, better skipper, and then next time you are smarter and more experienced, and you can do it on your own. If you, are, okay. if you are confident with the boat, if you know what to say, you are confident with it. Honestly, yeah, you don't lose. Okay. It's okay. okay. very easy to sail. The wind is always coming from the same same area, uh-huh. north, northeast. So it's one of the best areas to sail because uh, it is wind, but not too much wind. Always on the same side. So Carabin, I think for me, it's not the best place maybe, but it's one of the best places to sail. Mm-hmm. And when is the best time to to, to go sailing uh, with you? Alors, if I'm commercial, I will sail all the year. <laughs> now, uh, now the clients want the winter. All the, uh-huh. all the clients want the winter. They want from November to March, April. Now mm-hmm. the best season, if you want for the very season, is March to June. But March, March to June, the clients doesn't want to come at this period. They want winter. But honestly, it's always good to come to the Caribbean, especially mm-hmm. because we are very east of the, in the Caribbean. When is the hurricane season? For example, in July or August, is less dangerous than Cuba or uh, other place. Because mm-hmm. hurricane is not, we don't have hurricane. We can have, but it's rare. And uh, it's coming like a tropical uh, depression. Mm-hmm. So it's like one or two days, so you can still have your good holidays. For example, okay. we always sail, I always sail, sail in uh, in August, and I always have good time over there. Always, okay. always. We have a question from agent. Do they offer a chart brief for bare boat bookings? Do you offer it? What do I offer? I didn't, I didn't get it. Do you offer a chart brief? For bare boat bookings, like a briefing, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah I got it. Uh, yes, we do it. When you go to the check-in next morning, okay. we, always do, we always do a check-in with a technician. And if mm-hmm. you need some information, we do it. But the, we all, we do it more before the charter with the client. Okay. When a client okay. asks questions, we, uh, we, pre- we prefer to do it before that the client arrives. Uh-huh. We like okay. the clients to bear the... the, the the briefing before before that they are on the spot because okay. when they are on the spot they are too busy to understand the boat mm-hmm. and they ask too many questions and the boat now they are very complicated as before it's not a charter boat as before now you've got a watermaker you've got a generator and you've got plenty of things very, like important to do and so mm-hmm. clients have too many things to learn in few minutes because the check-in yeah. is done in one hour so the best is to prepare it before, honestly. Mm-hmm. Okay, and After another we question. We have another question. Do the crew use the front bow cabins? Yes, they do. Yes. Okay. They do. They do. Uh, after, it's, it's true, if you want a, a best crew, they want a cabin. The mm-hmm. best of the best. Because they're getting old, they've got experience, and they want, the, they want a cabin. But we can mm-hmm. find any solution. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think we don't have any questions. If we will have uh, questions, I will just jump in and uh, ask you to to answer uh, again. Uh, thank you very much. Um, our next fleet is uh, Kong Charters. Rasika, please, can you accept to be promoted so that you can present? Hello. Hello. Hi, can you see me? Yes. Welcome, Rasika. How are you? I'm good. Sorry. Uh, I'm still on Caribbean time. Got a little ah. bit confused. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, guys. I'm, I'm Rasika. I, w- I work for Conk Charters. We are a small bareboat charter company in the British Virgin Islands, which is the best sailing capital of the world. We have... <laughs> Modest. <laughs> modest, modest. <laughs> they are small, but uh, the sailing is big. Aha, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> so, Martina, what would you like me to do? Do you want me to jump right in? 
Yeah, just uh, tell us something about your fleet, uh, about the area. I prepared also some questions at the end, uh, like for everyone else, uh, like where to fly, how to arrive from airport to the base, what to see, the best places, etc. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so our, let me start off with how, what we do. So yeah. as I mentioned earlier, we are a small bareboat company. We are a family run business, which means I work with my husband and my father-in-law and my <laughs> husband's godparents. So it's fantastic. We Love have, you. <laughs> we have everything from small monohulls, like 36 feet Genos, which are quite old, like 20, 2009 to brand new Lagoon 46, 2020 with four cabins, four heads, the fly bridge, the water maker, the generator, the works, everything. So we have something that suits everyone's preferences mm -hmm. and we are different from everyone else because our bear, our prices are a bit more affordable. So mm -hmm. we don't, we are usually 10% 10, 10 cheaper than the market leader. So which mm -hmm. is great for people, especially who are first time getting into sailing or large yeah. families who want to keep it value. So mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. that's about our fleet. And where, where we are based is based, we are based right in the center of Road Town Tortola. So it's very easy to get to us, especially if you're taking a ferry from St. Thomas. We're only two minutes on a taxi to, um, uh, from the ferry terminal to our base. And oh, nice. So the easiest way to get to Tortola is from, um, from, Miami, from Miami or any of the kind of West Coast of no east coast places in the, is it east coast or west coast no, well it's from miami uh, atlanta all those side uh, destinations you can take a flight mm -hmm. directly to st thomas and take a ferry over which is what most people prefer because it is cheaper or you can come mm -hmm. through europeans usually come through st martin or puerto okay. rico and then connect into tortola via a small short hopper flight best, uh -huh. okay. i would say the best time to sail would be like um november to end of April is our high season. The winds are amazing. You can always expect about 20 knots of wind blowing from the east. And um, the all the bars and restaurants are open. There's lots of events going on. One thing that is particularly happens during this time is full moon parties. The New Year's Eve party at Foxy's is world famous. It's attended by like top notch celebrities like uh, Kenny Chesney and you know the Rolling Stones and people like that so it's fantastic and um, so we have itineraries set itineraries about going around the islands so the starter thing that you would do is like go around circumnavigate Tortola and each island has its own set of mooring balls so what we ask people to do is pick up mooring balls in destinations like um, Cooper Island, Peter Island, Virgin Gorda, um, Anna Garda and Yachts Van Dyke. And I can't pick a best mooring spots among them because they're also fantastic. So, and when you're not sailing, there's loads of other things to do, especially in places like Anna Garda, where you can go on land, land tours, you can go on snorkeling tours, you can go on fishing trips, deep sea fishing trips as well, which can all be arranged locally through rendezvous uh, services with local providers. Something that we would help our charter guests with once they book the charter with us. Mm -hmm. um, my recommendation as a local would be to go explore the North Sound, especially the brand new Sabah Rock and the Bitter End Yacht Club, which have just opened after the after the hurricanes of 2015. In um, they opened in de December last year, so it's absolutely uh -huh. fantastic. So it's, brand it's, new. it's brand new, and all the construction is new. They've got new wood-fired pizza ovens. There's, they catch lobsters every day. Um, oh, nice! Yeah, so you can always expect fresh fish, which people love when they're sailing. And what I particularly like is um, at 5 p.m. at Sabah Rock, once you've moored up, you go there for a happy hour and they feed the tarpons and chum up the water. So this great big fish come around the islands and it's fantastic and we love it. Nice. A great experience, I can assume. Yes. So it's a great Perfect. experience. So I would definitely recommend BVI as a sailing holiday for people who have never sailed in the Caribbean before. It is easy sailing because it is, uh, the winds are consistent and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the transit state channel is quite calm. The waters are quite calm. 
Perfect. One short info. So all the fleets that we met until now, uh, they're already in MMK available for agencies, brokers to book online. Kong Charters is not yet online, but you can always, of course, um, um, prepare the offer, etc. They will be online and uh, real-time bookable very soon. And their new website is also going live very, very soon, uh, built by MMK. So definitely we are uh, waiting for something new and great to happen uh, and definitely we'll be able to book them anytime soon. Absolutely. So we're very excited to be moving over to yeah. MMK very shortly. We're doing the transition yeah. now as we speak. Yeah. So we're moving all our uh, systems over, including our website to MMK. So yeah. not only our website is going to show availability real time, which we are really excited about. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Rasika. Um, if anyone has any questions, please uh, do not hesitate to, to, to ask. Thank you very much. Thank you. And our last fleet today was supposed to be Waypoint Yacht Charter. Uh, Susan uh, or Chelsea were supposed to present. Susan got sick and Chelsea got stuck on a meeting. So basically, I will go shortly uh, through the uh, points about them. And they're the last fleet that we are presenting today. So they are obviously from US, uh, having uh, 40 sailing yachts. Uh, they are golden partner of MMK, meaning that they exclusively use um, MMK as a booking system. And uh, they are with us for more than a year now. Uh, based in Annapolis and NEK as well, uh, this is the list of their boats. Uh, so they offer a variety of sailing yachts, power cats, um, and uh, really variety of uh, boats and I see some Montreal so it's great and uh, I believe that with them uh, the experience is uh, great because I know the girls and uh, they're really really funny great and uh, extremely uh, client oriented so the client is feeling happy with them. Um, I don't have Susan or Kirsty or Chelsea with me today but uh, I prepared a short um, video of a success story that we record, recorded uh, last year with them in, uh, in the US in Annapolis. So I will show you that briefly. Enjoy. Uh, Martina, sorry to interrupt. We lost the audio of the video. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, give me one second. How do I create it? Back to meeting. Uh, the Zoom settings, the three dots, and then you have the uh, share computer audio. Here it is. And okay. And I think now it's fine. Good. Oh, my name's Kirsty. I'm the president and partner for Waypoint. Waypoint International has now four new bases coming in. Uh, we're expanding all the time. We have three set up bases at the moment. We have uh, Waypoints Florida, Waypoints Annapolis and Waypoints BVI, which is going to be opening very shortly. My background into this was I've been in the industry 28 years and the charter industry is my passion. What I plan to do with Waypoint is to make it a luxury charter company, which means we're just going to set our standards just a little bit higher than we normally would. We're going to make sure our boats are immaculately maintained. We're a luxury boutique um, charter company. What we're doing in the BVI is we're opening on the 1st of November, so I'm leaving actually the Annapolis Boat Show. I'm going home to the BVI, which is my passion, and I'm going to open that base straight up. We work alongside with Atlantic Cruising and what the passion is with Waypoints is we're always bringing in brand new boats. We're bringing in new Fontaine Paggios and Duports. Okay. So all yeah. the latest models. Okay. We have with our fleet is we range from 40 feet all the way up to 53 feet, depending on monohulls and catamarans. 
we probably have a 50-50 split with monohulls and catamarans in each basis. When we, they come into our fleet, we make sure that they're commissioned up to the standards that Waypoints wants them to be at, which is luxury linens, luxury galley equipment, so that when our customers step on board, they feel like they're stepping into a Ritz-Colton hotel. And when they go out, they can expect that the boats have been maintained to a high standard, so we hope that we will never have any problems going out with us. So the big thing we want to do is people step on board, they get on and we're going to have just the basics on board ready for them. But beforehand they're going to meet my team of guys which are going to have their provisionings ready for them to go on board. Anything that they wish to put extra on the boats like sup boards, snorkel equipment. If they want to go diving in any areas we'll have that sorted for them. The customer service team in every single base has knowledge of all our local areas. I have a lot of ladies working for me. So in each base you'll find that I have my base manager, my customer service teams. They are always on call 24-7. They'll answer any emails or telephone conversations that you need with them and they're there to answer all your questions. Waypoints is all about the team and making it a family. Not only for our owners and customers, but for anybody that's out there that wants to reach out to Waypoints. We want to bring them into the family. We especially have now a new um, section into Waypoints which is called Waypoints Wanderers. So anybody that's purchasing a charter with Waypoints, once they go to one charter destination, they're also going to get discounts for the next charter destination. We're opening up a whole new section with Waypoints Wanderers, which is going to have hashtags, t-shirts, bags. We're going to offer to our customers that always with Waypoints, we're going to offer them early um, discounting. Um, anything that's going on in Waypoints, they're going to hear about it first. So hopefully within the next five to ten years we're going to expand, we're going to get more bases. We don't just want to stop at the bases that we're in at the moment. But in each base we have to make sure that our standards are kept to exactly the same in each base. We want to make sure that new boats are constantly coming in, new models, um, and keeping our staff happy, keeping our owners happy and keeping our customers happy is our main frame. I want you to step into one area that's a very boutique area and when you can step into your next boat you see exactly the same samples. All standards should remain the same and standardised throughout the Waypoints fleet. So when I came into Waypoints I decided that we'd switch to MMK booking system and it was possibly one of the best things we decided to do. We have a great API feed with them now which automatically talks to our booking system and it goes to our website. So if we update anything, it's always up to the minute updated on our website. We also have for our owners that they can go and see their calendars and we're bringing in much, much more with MMK. They've been a great help to Waypoints. So basically this was the short um, intro and information about Waypoints. I'm really sorry. Uh, the girls are not today with are not uh, with us today, but uh, I hope you met them virtually uh, through this video. That would be all for today. Um, I'm really happy that uh, we saw each other here, that we all met on this webinar and meet new fleets event. Uh, after the event, definitely I will send you the Cuba uh, PDF. Uh, all the other fleets, if you have something that you want to share with the attendees of the webinar, send it to us, we will share, of course. Uh, do we have any questions uh, to end up this uh, Meet New Fleets or recover it all? Hi, Rasika, please accept. Okay, we have it. Very good presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Krubo cabins. Okay, we answered everything. If there are no other questions, uh, I will definitely uh, thank you all. Thank you for joining and see you on the next Meet New Fleets on July 20th, uh, 11 a.m. Central European time because it will be uh, also Mediterranean companies there. Thank you all for joining and have a good day.